Alrighty. Remember what I talked about? Petty crime was about to go through the roof. Well, this is what I wake up to this morning. Someone ripped off the glass of my car to go through my glove compartment. And just to look, just to look through the glove compartment and other things. I typically don't leave anything of value in my cars. Now for many, many years, I don't know if this is because I was living in a house. I used to leave a gun in the glove compartment but I haven't done that. So this is, I don't even know how much damage. I know the, that window, I'm thinking 500 to 700 bucks to replace the window. And then I gotta get it retinted to match the other windows. So that's the project tomorrow. But yeah, last night, a bunch of cars were broken into and they hit several buildings. So, could have been worse, could have been worse. I have talked about class, economics, and certain demographics at length on this channel. And we're about to get into it. The people who did that to my vehicle are a member of the worthless segment of society. These people are not contributors to society. They're not builders of society. And the ranks of the worthless people have exploded. And part of the problem is you have social media. Now, what does social media do? Social media amplifies the good life. I am kind of to a degree part of that. You know, I've put up what I drive, I've put up where I live, and I, I live a really luxurious life. And you have people who are in the worthless segment looking at that and they want that, but they don't want to do the work or build themselves or create a situation where they can have that. And this is why they're the worthless people. Like we got hit 11 cars in this building. And here's the thing. This is why this person is worthless. The windows on all my cars, except for the Mercedes, are limo tint black. You cannot see what's in the car. So this person broke my window just to look around. There was no assurance of having anything of value. They just broke my window to look around in the car. To look around. And it's gonna cost me $450 to get it fixed and I gotta get that window retinted. So we're looking at $600 that this worthless person who was just walking around, because he, here's one of the things. When I was living in Sandy Springs, I noticed that there were more and more homeless people moving in. At my storage facility, there's a gentleman who has set up, he's got a table and a chair and he's got all his stuff behind him and he just hangs out near there. What you're seeing is the worthless people want the good life. And part of this segment, cause like, like, like I said, this is one of the reasons that I moved. Even though I was a recent victim of petty crime, I still feel the move was a good situation because if I lived in the house, that never would have happened because that car would have been inside the garage. 
a locked garage. But I'm still on that thesis that the overwhelming number of people who are joining the worthless ranks, and let me go ahead and spell out, what is a worthless person? It's not about race. There are worthless black folks. There are worthless white folks. There are worthless Mexicans. There are worthless Asians. I will say from an Asian and Hispanic standpoint, they have less worthless people than black and white people. The majority of the worthless people are black and white. And these are people, once again, these are the people who are leaving these comments on my channel. These people are devoid of critical thought. They're devoid of education. They're devoid of knowing what's right. They have no conscientiousness trait, none whatsoever. They walk around, they observe what someone else has, and they're like, that's good enough for me and I want it. And that's not bad. But the, the bad part is, crime is about to explode. You think crime is bad right now? It's gonna get worse. It's gonna get much, much worse. And this is one of the reasons that um, I carry. Now, this is my, my 45. And I'm probably gonna start carrying this one. This one is bigger because my daily carry is a little smaller. But people, it's about to get real out here. One of the things that I'm consistently seeing in my rental car business is like when I first started, I didn't have these problems that I have a bunch of people consistently late, which means that Uber and Lyft have slowed down. This means the stimulus money is filtering out of the economy. I suspect by February, all of the stimulus money will be out of the economy. This will be the business stimulus. This will be the personal stimulus. Uh, I haven't been checking. I don't know if there's any talks of another stimulus check, but once all of that stimulus money leaves the economy and then we start getting back to, because what we saw with the pandemic was an exaggeration. We saw an exaggeration with Airbnb. We saw an exaggeration with, um, what's the name of it? the car rental company. I forget it, it's, it's at the top of my head. Um, you saw an exaggerated bounce because people were pent up and then once they could get free and this kind of pushed up prices, it pushed up um, income for people who were doing Airbnb. And once we snap back to the real economy, a lot of these people who are making business decisions based upon the exaggerated economy are going to be in for a rude, rude, rude awakening. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I stopped buying cars. You know, currently I have six cars that are wrecked and, um, you know, as much as I want to go out and buy another car, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to refuse to do it. If, even if I lose some more, I'm going to refuse to do it until I get my dealer's license. So, one of the things that is happening is with the pandemic, we had a lot of people who had the opportunity to experience time freedom. Now, what is that? You can live in your house, you can set your own schedule because they weren't foreclosing on people, they weren't throwing renters out, they weren't repoing cars. These people developed a false sense of security that has led many of these people to quit their jobs in a quest for something better without already having another job lined up. I see a lot of financial foolishness in the world today. I, there, there are a number of videos by millennials like I quit my job. That is the mantra. I quit. There's something better, there's something deeper, there's something waiting on me, right? 
Now, if you're a millennial that has a successful YouTube channel, you quitting your job to focus on your YouTube channel and your YouTube channel is already bringing you in revenue because one guy, he quit a six figure job, but his YouTube channel brings in 40,000 a month. Uh, it ain't a hard decision there. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about Ed and Ann and Johnny and Alice, normal Americans who don't have a YouTube channel, who don't have an internet business, who don't have an online business, who are quitting their jobs for something better to come in the future. And we don't even know what that better future even looks like. We don't know what it tastes like. We, we have no clue. So be on guard, my people, for the explosion. Because right now it's already starting to, to really, really ramp up. What we're experiencing now is nothing compared to what's about to come. Because all of these people who are quitting their jobs, who have no savings accounts, who have no access to funds, they're gonna run into a wall. They're gonna run into a financial wall. And at this point, it's gonna get desperate because the person who broke my car window is a worthless, desperate person. When you put worthless and desperate together, these people, and let's talk about the lack of education. Now, I dropped out of college my junior year, but I, based upon the fact that I've never stopped learning, I am 55 years of age, and for the last 23 years, I have been in school. I've been in how to write a book school. I've been in how to create an online, online course school. I've been in how to create a YouTube school. I've been in how to teach, I've, I've been in multiple schools. I never stopped learning. I never stopped reading. I never stopped increasing my knowledge base. So I will say I am better educated than most people who have a bachelor's or even a master's because they went to someone's school, they finished their curriculum and they got their degree and they stopped learning. I'm, I'm here to tell you, you got to keep learning after your bachelor's, after your master's, after your doc, you got to keep learning. And with the segment of the worthless and desperate people, they, like, I guarantee you, if I was able to find this person who broke my window and sit him down and have a conversation, it's like, how many books have you read in the last year? It would be zero. See, what I am seeing, which makes no, no sense to me, which makes no sense to me whatsoever, I am seeing people that feel that there is some type of financial fairy godfather that's gonna save them. There is no need to save money. There is no need for a proper career. Pro Somebody gonna save me. It reminds me of this woman who was on the news years and years ago and she had seven kids and she was going on somebody got to take care of these kids not i have to take care of my children but somebody has to take care of these children someone apart from me someone outside of this nucleus has to step up and take care of seven children that she had without the benefit of a husband, multiple baby daddies. Which brings me to this part of the conversation about the worthless and desperate people. The majority of people who, like many of the folks who are leaving all these nasty comments and stuff, are members of the worthless and desperate sect. How do I know? When I go to block them from leaving anything else on my channel, I look at the content that they consume. It is always BS. It is never, I never see TED talks. I never see mathematical talks. I never see science 
or National Geographic. It's always World Star or some rat. It's always BS. The worthless and desperate have a low information diet where they consume garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. This is like the fool who stole my car. I want you to think about this because he is a member of the worthless and desperate sect. Stole my car. I turned the car off. They paid me. Then they def they circumvented the GPS kill switch system. They went ahead and got around that. Now, why they do that? Because they knew that they were not going to have the money to pay me. They knew they weren't going to have the money to pay me. But they did not want to give up that car. So let's look at living in the hotel. Like if you need a car, they should have been renting a Torcel or a Honda or something, not a BMW. When you look at the decision making process of the worthless left behind and the desperate, the decision making process is always funky. It's always funky. Like, look at my decision making process for the Porsche. I wanted that Porsche in 2017 and I could have got that Porsche in 2017 if I wanted to finance it because I had the money cash, but I wasn't in the position in 2017 that I was in in 2020. So it was way easier for me to get the Porsche in 2020 because the money that I spent for the Porsche and the BMW, I had back the next month. It wasn't rolling like that in 2017. Notice the decision-making process. I had the ability to get a Porsche in 2017. I had the ability to finance it, but because of my economic training, but my financial training, I didn't want to go down that road. So what did I do? I waited. This type of thought process and decision making is completely absent from the worthless and the desperate left behind set. It's called delayed gratification. Instead of going ahead and getting it when I could have got it, I waited until my financial situation was better. The left behind, the desperate, the worthless people? No, 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 no. These are the people who would be living in a boarding house and going to the store and spending $2,500 on a Gucci belt. You're living in a boarding house. You're living in a hotel and you're going out and spending $500 to $2,500 for some articles of clothing that you will rapidly depreciate. There's much thought about the great resignation, you know, that the powers that be need to treat people a better way. Um, I don't think so. I think that once we get out of this phantom economy, and what do I mean by phantom economy? The stimulus economy was a phantom economy. It wasn't the real economy. It was a phantom because real economic mandates and economic standards and economic applications did not apply. You currently have people who are living in the house that they've not paid the mortgage on in 20 to 24 months. You have people until they started to get rid of these eviction mandates. You had people living in an apartment for 12 months that they did not pay for. You had someone driving a car that they have not paid the car payment in six, eight, nine, ten months. So with the suspension of real economic duress for not paying your bills, this created this phantom economy, which was operating on a set of strange ass rules. Now we're starting to work our way out of the phantom economy into the real economy. I figure by summer next year, summer 2022, all the stimulus money will be out of the economy and we will start working on the real economy because 
even though COVID numbers have gone down, we still have massive supply chain issues. We're looking at three to five years to work our way out of this mess. And as we get to the real economy, make no mistake about it, there's gonna be a lot of pain, a lot of pain. There was some sad buster who was talking about, I should have not called the police to get my car back. That I should have allowed these people because for me to bring in law enforcement will create a set of adverse circumstances that I should have been patient and I should have had sympathy for someone who was intentionally stealing from me. Fool, you're, you're, you're not a business owner. I don't know why you clowns be coming on this channel. Like, I'm a business owner. No, you're not. Because if you were a real business owner and looking at the numbers, you would have did the same thing that I did. You would have did the same thing. And this is creating this collective angst among the people. The common man, the worthless person, the desperate person. They all feel that someone is coming to save them. When these clowns are leaving comments, and this is a new thing, because it, 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 it comes in waves. At first it was like all of this hate, that didn't work, and then they started to attack my supporters. That didn't work, and now it's like, why is this guy getting likes? See, the worthless and the desperate don't know anything about building value, building a community, because all of these things take work. They know nothing about that. They are creatures of comfort. If it's comfortable, if it's easy, they're with it. But if it's hard and challenging, no, 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 I don't want no part of that. And this is why this fool broke my window. Just to look around. There was no assurance of a payday. Now, what was funny, I used to, I used to keep this gun in that glove compartment. And when I moved to this apartment building, I removed this gun and I took it out the car. So this person who broke my car window got nothing. I didn't leave a cell phone in the car. I didn't leave a laptop. I left nothing of value in that car. So he broke my window causing $600 worth of damage because one, he didn't, he didn't give a damn. That's number one. And number two, this is a person that if he has offspring, he's going to pass on his proclivities to his children. It doesn't get any better. If this man, and it was a man, make no doubt about it, is reproducing, his children are going to grow and become a member of the worthless people segment. These are not contributors, because here, here's the thing. I predict next year is gonna be a record year for crime because as the stimulus money filters out the economy and we go from the phantom economy back to the real economy, the economic pain is gonna be intense. It's gonna be so intense. You, you got a lot of these folks who are leaving all these nasty comments, they're gonna do something illegal in the future now, why is that? Your money is where your time is. I got all these folks making these videos about me. I ignore them. You know why? Because for me to go back and forth with an uneducated, unaccomplished fool, because this is who's doing this. None of them. The, I think Abba and Preach did a video and that's like the biggest channel to do a, a video about that video. And for the most part, I'm gonna say something. It's been black folks 
It hasn't been any white creators who jumped in on this. It has been black folks. Jealous ass black folks. That's who's it been. And remember, white people and black people have the largest segment of the worthless people. What you're gonna see, many of these people, as we, as the economy starts to tumble down, as the stimulus money evacuates the economy, they're gonna become very, very desperate. They're already worthless, not a contributor to society, just a consumer, not even a high level consumer. And then they're gonna go, they're gonna be worthless and then they're gonna go to desperate and they're gonna start doing something strange for some change. They're gonna start doing some crazy stuff just to get by. You're gonna see an explosion in van life you're gonna see an explosion of tent cities. You're gonna see an explosion in homelessness. You're gonna see an explosion in crime. It's, it's going to be ridiculous. And this is what's gonna happen. Going back to when Giuliani was the mayor of New York, after David Dinkins, the people were fed up with the crime. And they were like, we don't care if you break their constitutional rights, we don't care if you stop and frisk them, we don't care. The people are gonna demand that the folks in charge actually start to do something. So here, I'm in Atlanta, Red Dog will, Red Dog will be coming back. Red Dog will be coming back or some equivalent level task force. And they're going to start targeting young black males. Now, why do I say that? Who do you think broke my car window? A young black male. So if you're a young black male, I suggest that you start wearing a cardigan and a bow tie. You think I'm kidding. You think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. You want to differentiate yourself from the mass of young black males. You want to wear a bow tie, a cardigan, maybe some glasses. You want to look respectable because what's going to happen is there are young black men who are not doing anything wrong. They're just living their lives. They're going to get called up. Why? Because Pookie, Pookie and Ray Ray, you're going to get called up. So I urge you, if you're a young black male, to start a business, to start getting something going on for yourself because I feel that this is probably gonna go on for five or 10 years because it's gonna get so bad. It's gonna get so bad that the people are like, you need to do something, politicians. And this is when, I mean, racial profiling, it's gonna be on and popping. And to the young black men who are just living their lives not doing the thing, it's gonna to be totally 100% unfair. However, my young black male, you got friends who are doing this stuff and you say nothing. You know your boy T-Rock is jacking folks. You know your boy Lloyd is breaking in. You know they're doing this and you still hang out and this is how you're gonna get caught up. Because even though you're not conducting those activities, you are cool with people who are. This is how you're gonna get caught up. This is how you gonna get messed up. And I'm gonna tell you something. If we're gonna see the ushering in of new laws, like what happened to me, right? What happened to me? Like if I saw them break it into my car and they have a gun on me and I shot them, I would be in trouble. That's gonna go away. You're going to have the ability to defend your property and shoot people 
on site who are breaking into your stuff. Used to be, if someone was trying to break in your house, they were outside your house, you couldn't do anything to them because they were outside your house. But once they entered your house, the rules change. You could pop a cap in that ass. What's going to happen is you see someone breaking into your property, you're going to be able to shoot them. It's coming. Right now, it, you know, it depends upon if you see someone breaking in your property and they're not coming after you, you can't shoot them. But in the future, because like when I went down there and I saw my car, I was so pissed off. And if I was walking in the garage and I saw this fool messing with my car and I had my gun on him, I would have shot him. I would have shot him because here's the thing. These worthless people are not going to amount to anything. They're not. They're going to continue to do what they're doing. They're going to continue to prey upon those who are working. They're going to continue to do certain things. Let's see. This is it's a 40 caliber. It's a SIG. They're going to continue to be reckless. They're going to continue to vandalize, destroy our property. So if I encountered this person and bust a cap in his ass, I would have saved us all a lot of grief because this person is going to continue to do this stuff until they get caught. That's what you're dealing with. It is a criminal mindset. Going back to the guy who stole my car. He's a convicted felon who got caught with a gun. And he saw the YouTube stuff and he was trying to talk smack. And I was like, you're a convicted felon that got caught with a gun and you're going to have to do five years in the Georgia prison. But you feel that you can talk smack to me. No wonder you're a convicted felon because you're a complete and other dumbass. See, these people, once again, feel that people like me should have a lot of compassion, you know, because I am doing well in life, that I should subsidize their lifestyle. Hey, you know, you got all these rental cars. You, it should be cool to let someone rent a car for a month and not pay you. You could take that hit. This is how these people think that someone is going to save them, that someone's going to be an, an angel and help them out in their time of need. I remember player player who owed me $1,400 was talking about you should have some compassion for your renters. And he's like, hey, I could pay you right now. I was like, you motherfucker, you don't even have the money. Why are you playing? So once again, with the worthless the desperate sec and this 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 group of people is about to explode it's about to explode we're going to have a bunch of we're going to have we're going to have about 25 percent of the people in that society who are going to be producers and then we're going to have 75 percent of the people in our society who will be consumers and of that 75 percent 50 percent of that 75% are going to be the worthless, desperate people. We're talking about 120 million people. 120 million people. 120 men, women, children, old people. And as a part of this worthless, desperate sect. And this is why I feel that at some point, universal basic income is going to come about. I just feel that it's coming in the future because it's not going to be there to help them out. It's going to be there as a pacifier to keep these people from robbing the 25%. So I see personal security, growth industry, any type of security, cyber security, per it's going to be a growth industry next decade because you have so many folks, you know, credit card crime about to go through the roof. 
you have so many folks who are going to avail themselves to something illegal because they don't have the intellectual fortitude to sit down and conceive and build something. Back in the day when I was just like most of the regular folks out there, I worked a regular job, I took pride in going to work. That type of sensibility is completely absent. What do you mean you want me to go to work? I worked seven days a week, two years straight, didn't miss a day. And a work ethic, oh my God, that is gone. A work ethic for certain members in the, in the worthless, left behind, the desperate. They don't have a work, a work ethic. One of the things that I'm seeing, cause like uh, with my car business, I'm going to launch Mac Daddy Premium 2022. I'm gonna get nicer cars, but I'm gonna have some very high standards of who gets these cars because I'm seeing this over and over and over. When I get someone poor, living in a hotel, they don't know how to take care of stuff. They don't. Like recently, I sold a camera on eBay and the guy was so shocked that what good, he was like, you could not tell that the camera wasn't new. And I, you know, he was like extremely happy. The left behind, the worthless and the desperate, they can't take care of nothing. There is a correlation between intellect, cleanliness, and having money. And consistently, the biggest problems I have with renters, the car comes back, is completely filthy. Completely filthy. It's always on E. It's always on E. And I am seeing this correlation over and over and over again. Like right now, I have someone who, he, he paid for an oil change. And I told him, I haven't gotten around to paying that because I'm just stretching it out. And he is freaking out because he had to pay for an oil change. And now he's like, I got a slow leak. I was like, bring it back. And he's like, well, what will I drive? I don't, like, I don't know what you're going to drive. Because see, one of the things I'm starting to do is when I have people who cannot take care of, like, all right, the plug of tire is nine bucks in the hood, 20 bucks in my neighborhood, super cheap. If you're going to be complaining about spending 10 to 20 bucks to get a tire fixed, I am taking my car back. I am taking my car back because what I'm seeing is that these folks are incompetent, extremely incompetent across the board. They cannot problem solve for shit. Can't. I mean, I'm just sitting there shocked because like I said, you know, I have a whole new plan for Mac Daddy Premium and it's going to be a totally different rollout and it's going to be a totally different set of cars. Because, you know, these, let's see, at that point, I would have been in the car rental business eight months and I've learned so much. I've learned so much. But once again, when you're dealing with the desperate, the worthless and the left behind, these people will steal, they will cheat, they will do whatever they gotta do to get over because they don't have the intellectual capabilities to live a fruitful life through hard work. They just don't. I'm, you know, I used to think that if you gave, I feel that there's some people who are part of the worthless sect. If they knew better, they would do better. But I feel the majority of these folks are hopeless. I feel that they're hopeless. And this is why you need to get one of these because you're hardworking. You live in a nice neighborhood. You provide for your family and you're going to wake up one night and one of these worthless left behind people is going to be in your house trying to steal what you've got. Bust a cap in their ass. Bust it. I mean, because they're gonna keep doing this stuff. They're gonna keep doing it. Bust a cap in their ass. Get yourself a gun, get yourself a concealed carry permit, go, start going to the range, because I feel that we're about to go through a very dark period in America with these people. 
because once again, we have social media, which is like a big old screen of, this is what your life could be like. And they don't care how they get it. We've had numerous social media scam artists, hush puppy. This guy, all his money came from criminal activity. We have so many people who want to stunt, who want to floss, who want to flex on the ground. Forget building a business and working. Forget that. I just want to stunt. I want attention. The great left behind the worthless people, they want attention. Like these fools are leaving these comments on my channel. You know what pisses them off? First, they try to get to me. That didn't work. Then they tried to get to my supporters. That didn't work. And now they're, they're pissed off because they spend all this time writing these comments that don't pay them any money and I delete them. See, what they're doing is they're seeking attention and they'll leave a comment and hope that someone else would answer that comment so they can start a dialogue with a stranger. This is how sad their lives are that they are thirsty for a conversation with a stranger on the internet about BS. And this is why these people are worthless. This is why they're left behind. And this is why they will soon be desperate. They're coming. Like once again, and I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm talking to all my people. Get yourself a gun. Because like I said, that scenario, you work hard, you, build, you live in a nice house. One of these people is going to be in your house. I'm telling you, it is coming. This is one of the reasons that I moved. That house was so big, someone could be downstairs and I wouldn't even know. I didn't like that. So let me know what you feel, think about this video. Share your thoughts and opinions. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.